Hey, what's up YouTube? Rico here from Rock Cuts and Shots, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Duoflex 2. All right, getting right to it, we're gonna do a quick restore on the Kodak Duoflex 2. Now this camera was available from the 1940s until about 1960. I like to look at the mechanical features to see if there's anything I need to fix. Open it up, do a quick inspection. There's the focusing knob, there's the aperture meters. All right, now let's get to it. Now first I give a quick wipe down of the outside, any little crevices I scrub with a Q-tip and then I go through with my toothbrush and I rub the whole thing down with a quick like alcohol solution. For lenses to clear the haze off, I usually use like an alcohol or vinegar solution. I have my tiny screwdriver there, flat tip of course, so I can get the front screws off and pry that panel off. And that's going to allow me access to the front lenses as well as the mirror on the viewfinder. So everything seems to be working, but it's a little dirty, so I give it a little a blow with the Rocket Air blower. Uh, then I take my swabs out and I use some Altura anti-alcohol solution so I can scrub the mirror down and the lenses. And give that a thorough wipe down so that I have a clean viewfinder. And I do the same thing with the top using a different swab or Sometimes the same swab, but the first one isn't too dirty. The thing I like about these cameras is that there's no electronic features for me to mess up. It's all completely mechanical, and if you break a part, the parts are relatively easy to replace. Now, one word of caution, if you're going to do this at home, uh, try not to scrub too hard with the toothbrush. The bristles uh, do most of the work. However, if you start scrubbing too hard, you can wipe down or wipe away the paint that they actually use to put the numbers on there. I like to use microfiber cloths to wipe down smaller parts as well as the lenses until they're clean and clear. I replace that, give a quick wipe down of this. And again, as I said, be careful with the pressure, otherwise you'll wipe all of that paint off and then you'll be left with a clear or not clear or transparent, but actually just blank piece of thin aluminum to put on the front. I use my screwdriver to put everything back in place and then adjust the focus knob. And this will take care of the inside. The screws are really tiny, so I got to use tweezers to kind of line them up. And then use my super small screwdriver to get everything tightened and put back in place. And that's it for the front part. All right, now I'm going back through and I'm scrubbing around. Uh, any pieces that I look, looks like I missed that have a little dirt pile on them. And here's where I can really get in there and scrub a little harder. I'm not worried about messing up paint or anything. It's usually just a leatherette that's a little too dirty for my liking. Or here I'm able to switch up to like a vinegar solution. And then any part that needs greasing, this is this is where I'd start applying grease. And as you can see, there's plenty of dirt that's formed over the years even on the strap, so I like to keep as many original parts as possible, so wiping down the strap is equally as important as wiping down the camera. Moving on to the inside, everything looks fairly clean, so let's try and load up some film here. So you take your 620, and it looks like you load it up from the top down to the bottom spool, 
or rather from the bottom spool up to the top and then you scroll it up to the top and that little red window actually shows you when you're ready to take your first shot. So shot composed and taken and that's it. That was a quick restore on the Kodak Duoflex 2. All right, so just like you saw in the restore video, uh, this film that this Tamra takes is called 620 film and it's basically 120 film. So it's a basic TLR film, but it's wrapped in a smaller, uh, thinner, little spool. So the spool is usually comes available uh, with the camera itself. However, they don't make 620 film anymore. So what you have to do is you have to find somebody online that rolls 120 film on 620 spools to fit the camera. So my first impressions is uh, it's a neat little camera to have in your collection if you're going to have something for display. So for display option, if you just want something hanging out in the background of uh, your shop or your shelf, uh, it's a great little $10 buy, like $10 to $20 buy on eBay. Uh, I had really high hopes for this camera, uh, considering I've shot a couple of TLRs already, uh, but I really wasn't impressed with it. So I'll show you some of the pictures that I shot, uh, but you basically load the film in the back, spool it out through here, and then you have a counter right here. One thing I didn't realize about the counter is, as I was kind of restoring this, I try to like make sure that I uh, it's brushed away all the uh, deteriorated foam. Uh, however, the biggest source of kind of light leak was probably this little red uh, dot right here. So this red dot allows you to see the numbers and see kind of like what number of film or actual shot you are. So depending on where you are in your shooting as you're spooling up and then taking your picture, it'll tell you the number of shots that you've taken so far. So I knew I was able to take 12 shots total with this. So overall, it's a cute little buy. I'm not really impressed with the pictures. Uh, however, I'm going to end up probably printing out a couple of these so I can uh, probably sell with the camera itself so that people can see the kind of quality of pictures that this takes. Uh, probably uh, the lens itself had something to do with it. It probably had a little bit of haze, uh, which I probably wasn't able to take out. And then the light leak were probably the two biggest issues that I had for the camera. So if you're looking for a quality a TLR, uh, this is not a great purchase. Uh, I have seen people get really good results. Uh, they've had really good patience with these and they were able to run through a few spools of film with it. However, I wasn't able to get the quality that I wanted out of it. It's okay if you just want to capture a landscape. It's not okay if you want to capture a person. But overall, I would rate this as a camera that you would just use for display as a little cheap 1950s memorabilia type of decor. And that's where I stand on it. Stay tuned and we'll review a box full of cameras that I recently picked up at a garage lot. Take it easy.